we are on. Let us pray. Eternal Father, God Almighty, we thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence to worship you. We do not go out of your presence. We are always in your presence. You don't go nowhere. We don't go nowhere either. We are always with you. Therefore, we praise you and we adore you. For there is none holy like you are. Be thou blessed forever for all you've done for us, giving us good sleep, refreshing our lives, making our life beautiful. Therefore, we thank you and we adore you, both now and forever. This morning, O oh God, we ask you to take absolute authority over our lives, over everything we do. Fill us with your greatness, your sweetness. Let the works of darkness be destroyed forever so that they have no say whatsoever in anything that has to do with us. Lord, seek out the secret intelligence of the enemy, your enemies, and put them to shame forever. For there is none like you, and there will never be any like you. Protect us, protect us, please, protect us from all evil. Seek out every intelligence of the enemy and bring them under your footstool. O oh Lord, respond to our immediate and urgent needs and bless us. We are willing to eat the best of the things of the earth. For to you alone be the glory, the honor, the power, the majesty, the kingdom forever and ever. Lord, we enter into your presence. We enter into your power. We exercise authority on earth because of you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, today we will do a lot for good, for the advancement of the kingdom, for the advancement of the people of God, for the advancement of our own personal life. For everything is for your profit and power. Hallelujah to your name. Amen. Is there anyone that had a dream last night that want to share a powerful dream with us? Because you see, this week, is the week of very powerful dreams. Be careful. Every dream that you dream this week, please, if it is possible, let me know about it. Because many of you are going to dream dreams that are going to step you into your future. Your future is going to be made by your dreams. Your dreams are going to determine your future. Either the dreams, and let me tell you something. If you've not had a good dream in your life for some years now, call me to write a dream for you. I can create a dream. Let me tell you something. This is a different ball game about me. This is a different part of me. If you want a dream that can erase every evil dream call me to make up a dream to create a dream for you 
because dreams are created and released as video or audio or a text into your life. And I can create a dream and put it into your life. Slot it in like a CD or like a DVD into your life and it will begin to run in you. This is the other side of me that I don't talk about easily. And I will do that. So tell people about what I do. The power side of me. I make up dreams for people and those dreams. When I, when I write it out for you, when I, or I speak it into you, it begins to happen to you whether you like it or not. I can create a dream of you driving a new car and you start driving a new car whether you like it or not. When once it leaves me, it cannot come back to me. It begins to do the job I've sent it to do. Is there any of you that has not had a good dream about something good that should happen to you? Then give me a call. That's why I exist on earth. Let me read to you what the Bible says about Jesus. Let's continue our studies. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13. Is there anyone who is on the conference line that is watching on Justin TV? Please let me know about the sound. Let me know about how you are seeing me, please. Nobody is watching on Justin right now? Am I, am I talking to people? Are there people on the conference line this morning? Okay. None of you is watching on Justin? No. Okay. Gillian, is that your voice this morning? Okay, that doesn't sound like you. Okay. Let me read to you from Hebrews 1 verse 18. That's where we, we have done verse 12. Now we are going to verse 18. Now listen to what it says. But to which of the angels said he that said God the Father at any time sit look at that sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstools listen to that we are studying Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13, that is verse 1, 3. There's never been a time that God has made angels to be equal to Jesus or make us humans to be equals to Jesus. Angels and us humans, or saints, I'm not talking of humans here, because there is different types of humans. Angels and us, the sons of God, the holy ones of God, are classified as servants. We are God's servants. Angels are, welcome home, angels are in a special class of their own as spirits. We are in a special class of our own for God as spirit and humans. But what has happened has been that human beings began to exercise more of their mind than their spirits. Yesterday I was dictating some thoughts to the administrator of the ministry. When you see the first book that is coming out, it will blow your mind. It will blow your mind. That is how you will know that um, 
That is how you will know. Let me put it that way so that. That is how you will know that majority of what I do, 99.5% of what I do is purely supernatural. It's purely supernatural, including what I write, including what I'm teaching. We and angels share a similar characteristics. We are both spirits and we are both ministers. What I mean by ministers, we are both officials. We are both messengers. We represent the presence of God. Our job is to demonstrate His power. I was not the one that coined my slogan. I woke up one morning and I heard the voice of God say to me, Do you know what your, your, your job description on earth is? I said, Please tell me. He said, To seek my presence. Manifest my presence and demonstrate my power. And that is my life job description. And when I do that, heaven is here. Heaven will show up. There's never been a time, you see, there are some people that teaches that Jesus is an angel. That's ridiculous. There's never been a time that God has spoken to any angel. And when we say angel, it includes fallen angels, which is Lucifer and all his rebellious hosts. So, those of you who live your life in fear of Satan are making the biggest mistakes of your life. Because there's never been a time that God spoke to Lucifer and said, or elevated him to such a special place. Where he occupied was just a tiny spot. Other angels in heaven occupied bigger spots too. As archangels, as 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 cherubs. So I don't understand why many of you are afraid of Lucifer. I have no idea. And the Bible even spoke of Jesus going to the world of those who die and took the key of death from him. And still people are afraid. What is this fear about? Fear of what? Of dying? God has tested death for us to show us, listen, there's nothing like that. I personally do not believe in death. I don't believe in death. Let me share something with you that you have to know. One day, back in Africa, God prepared me for life. And let me tell you how it happened. I was praying on my own. I think it was either around 12 noon in the afternoon or around 12 midnight. I think one of those, day, one of those times. I can't remember. And something happened. Somebody walked physically into my room and began to speak to me. I wanted to open my eyes to see who it was, but I couldn't open my eyes. I wanted to stand up to look him in the face, but I couldn't even stand up. I was powerless to do any of that. But then I zoomed in. My spirit zoomed in and I began to see that. It was an angelic person standing in my room. And he said to me, I'm going to share with you instantly, listen to this, instantly, the voice of Jehovah, the Father. That's the first time I hear the voice of the Father zoomed into the room at the same time. I was hearing, this angel was telling me what he was hearing from the Father at the same time. And I was listening to the Father at the same time. And listen to what they were telling me. 
I was told what my future is going to look like. I was told how I'm going to depart this earth when I will be a fully grown elderly man, very elderly. After that, they left. And since then, I do not believe that if I fly by airplane, that the airplane will crash. It will never crash. Or if I travel by ship in the water, that this ship will sink. It will never sink. Or that if I'm driving or being driven in a in a motor in a in a in a in a car, it will have an accident. It will never have an accident. It will never have an accident. I used to have a driver, and this uh, this white dude was very good driver very good driver he was assigned to me i will not go there and he drove me everywhere i went in america and one day he came to pick me from where i used to be you know and um, and then he was driving me back home because sometimes he will come and drop me with my car and then he will come and pick me back. And as he was coming to pick me up, he was driving. For some reason, he lost control of his driving and was about to run into his semi truck. I quickly, for some reason, my spirit was at work in a second and shifted the car to this side how I moved him there is there is there are mysteries beyond me how I moved him out from the driver's seat and I took over driving I have no idea in a split second he was on the drive where I was sitting and I was on the driver's seat and I stopped the car Push drove the other way and we continued. And I drove the rest of the way. He, t he asked me what happened. I told him I don't know what happened. <laughs> I told him I don't know what happened. I said to him, listen to me. I have been told that I don't die by accident. He said, there is no way that semi truck will not have hit us because the semi truck stopped. And the driver came out like, what happened? How did you do it to stop the car? Nobody could say a word. You see, there is a place in the supernatural where you reach. You know how Elijah knew how he's going to go back to heaven. Paul the apostle knew that it was Jesus talking to him in the mid-afternoon. You have to be sure of these things. See, let me tell you, what we call death is no death. What we call death is like me walking out of here into the balcony and walking back in here. There is a place where you reach in your relationship with the Lord. There is a place where you reach in your relationship with the Lord that you can travel back and forth to heaven while you are alive. You can travel back and forth from the supernatural to the physical, from the physical to the supernatural. So it doesn't matter to you. And that is why when I, I mean, I am not making, making light of those we loved not being there anymore. But we are spirit beings. That's who we are primarily. Dreams. Dream is one of the ways you can understand that you are not just human. There is more to you than being ordinary human. You can understand what is going on or what is about to happen in a few minutes, in a few hours, in a, in a, in a, in a day, in a week, in a month, in a year. In years to come, by being in the supernatural, you can see the earth through the eyes of the supernatural. 
just like people now live in space, in the space center, and they can zoom into the earth. The same way you can live in the supernatural and zoom into the earth, and you can see everybody and see what they're doing. That's why when people are telling me who they are, boasting about what they are doing, I laugh at them. Because through the work of the Holy Spirit, through the elevation of spirit, Geneva put that down for me, elevation of spirit, you can zoom in into what people are doing, who they are, what, what they think that they are hiding from you. Somebody will finish doing one thing and then walk up to you and tell you and lie to you and you just look at them and say, you get away from here. Quickly. We all should aspire for angelic lifestyle. Where you can stay here. If you are from Africa, you can, you can be right here in America and you'll be watching what your people are doing in Sudan. Or in Nigeria or South Africa if you are from Michigan and you live in in, uh, in California you can stay in California and be watching what your grandmother what your grandfather what your your people are doing in Michigan the only thing is you don't say much there are things that God will show you from the supernatural realms and you see what people are doing but you are not allowed to talk you don't, you don't want to embarrass people. It's given to you. You have this thing, this power, in order to have knowledge over people. So nobody can lie to you. I told you guys a story of somebody that came with a fake check to come and buy things from my mom, to come and buy from our grocery store back in Africa. And I ran from my father's uh, store from his store, I ran to my mom and told my mom, I whispered in my mom, to my mom's ear, give the man excuse why you cannot sell to him. Let him go to the, ne to the next door neighbor. Let him go to the next grocery store. And the guy and my mom told, told him that we don't have enough good as he wants. The neighbors might have enough. And he went, all the cash he paid them was fake. All the check he wrote to them, he bought things that filled a whole, a whole bus. And it was all fake. His name was fake, his address was fake. Everything was fake. My mom would have lost goods that was worth thousands of dollars. And my mom called me and my dad and they said, sit down son. How did you know this man? Have you known this man before? I said, no, I don't know him. How did you know that he's fake? I said, what speaks to me told me that he's fake and that I should go and want mommy. And I did it. The supernatural life is given to you to protect you, to promote you, to keep you away from evil people who will harm you. Because there are people who enjoy evil. They enjoy to do you evil. There are people who enjoy deceiving you, manipulating you. They enjoy it. It gives them power over you. There's never been a time that God has spoken to an angel and said to an angel, sit on my right hand until I make all your enemies your footstool. Now, there's something else introduced there. Jesus has enemies. He has enemies. And one of them is Lucifer. And all his hosts are Jesus' enemies. They are our enemies. I want you to know this. Whoever is the enemy of Jesus is our enemies. They are our enemies. And God has spoken to Jesus, sit at my right hand. The throne of Jesus is at the right hand side of the Father, not at the left hand side. Why is Jesus to sit at the right hand side of the Father? It's because he, listen carefully to what I'm going to say. Is because he is the right hand man of the Father. The power, the physical power, I will put it like that, that we 
this see physically that God uses to do mighty things is Jesus. And that's why if you've been taking him as ordinary person, it doesn't matter. People talk right nonsense about him. Then you're making the worst mistake of your life. Because anything God the Father is going to do, he's going to do it through Jesus. Because if God the Father rises up, the entire thing is, ha <laughs> ha, you have no idea what you are dealing with. Jesus tried to, to minimize some of the things. I'm not saying minimizing it. He is the one that pleaded with the Father and said, Daddy, don't do it this way. Daddy, let's go this way. Daddy, remember they are your people. That's Jesus. Remember that. That's why you must love this man called Jesus. You must love this brother of ours called Jesus. You must love this king, this God of ours called Jesus. You must love him. Father, don't destroy them, please. That is the right hand man of God. That's why he sits at the right, right hand of God. The Father want to communicate to us is through Jesus. You want wealth, it's true Jesus. You want gold, it's true Jesus. You want diamond, you want a new car, a new plane, whatever you want is true Jesus. Why? Because that's the mediator. You can't have anything from the kingdom without it coming from him. He is the custodian. Listen to the word I'm using. Jesus is the custodian of everything that belongs to God. The father can't do without him because the father loves him so much. This is like a marriage. Until you meet a man that you cannot do without him. If you meet a man or a woman that you cannot live on earth without them, then you know you have, you have arrived at marriage. But if it is somebody that you are like, well, I can find another man, I can find another woman, then you are still playing games. Jesus cannot do without the Father. And the Father cannot do without him. The Holy Ghost cannot do without both of them. And both of them cannot do without the Holy Ghost. That's what we call family. And everything you say, is protected until you are able to keep a family secret until you are able to walk you are able to agree nowadays this one said I want it to be done this way my way is better and this one my way is better but the family sit together when I say family I mean God the family sit together they have a little meeting everybody speak the father summarize. His idea is always right. And sometimes Jesus said, Father, what about this? The father said, that's right, let's do it that way. Sometimes the Holy Spirit said, what about this? The father said, that's great, let's go that way. Some husband will not even recognize that their wife has more than sex or than kitchen or than beauty. They don't consult her for anything. And some wives too. They don't consult the husband. And you think that is marriage? You're wasting your time. Why do we need Jesus? Is because he is the right hand person of the Father. He's the custodian. He's the administrator. He's the secretary of heaven. And not only that, this is a powerful place for us. I'm telling you, this is a powerful place for us. For us to be in association with this kind of a personality is a powerful place for us. Not only that, he said, God the Father has given him right hand means a place of eminent prominence. A place that is so highly elevated. Wow, that is why I want to be 
with him. That's why I want to spend more time with him. That's why wherever he is, that's where I want to be. Because I'm dealing with pure power. I'm dealing with pure love. I'm dealing with pure peace. There's nothing.